this is this is one of 215 regiments from the Commonwealth, but we had almost 340,000 men that fought uh, from the state of Pennsylvania during the war, and that's in all branches of service, cavalry, uh, U.S. troops, uh, infantry, and artillery. But uh, this one's a state issue. So you, by state issue, I mean the coat of arms was depicted in the canton of the flag. And this is actually one of three flags. The reason we have 215 regiments but almost 400 and some flags are that as their flags would deteriorate, they could petition the adjutant general for a new flag. So this is a second issue state color for the 83rd. This one, well, this one's unique because you can see they actually had produced this for the 157th Pennsylvania. It's lettered over there in the center. 157th was supposed to get 1,000 men to, to make muster. Um, they never got those 1,000 men, so they had a regiment on the books that didn't have troops. <clears throat> so rather than um, just have this flag sit around, they re-stenciled it and, and gave it to the 83rd. Don't want to conject, but uh, these this is generally what a bullet hole looks like after 100, almost 55, 60 years. It's, it's more of a it doesn't, doesn't make a nice pristine hole. It makes more of a knife slit with a powder burn around it. And there's one that I'll show you after this that I, I can document has all bullet holes in it. This regiment's unique because it was made up of over 100 school teachers from throughout the, the Commonwealth. So they were including, um, well, their colonel's name was George McFarland. He was the, I think, the superintendent up at the McAllisterville Academy in Juniata County. So. He and all of his instructors were in this regiment as well, and he's the he's the father of um, J. Horse McFarland, the City Beautiful movement here in Harrisburg. That was his father. They came from Juniata County. But anyway, um, this regiment, uh, like I said, saw battle at Chancellorsville, where I forget what their losses were there, but fairly heavy. But at Gettysburg, there I think the second or third largest losses in, in over the three days. They lost 343 of 467 men engaged at Gettysburg in three days. So yeah, any of the repairs that you see here like this, that were, those were done in the field by the, the, the men or by the bearer. Um, you know, it was the bearer's responsibility to keep the flag in good working order. So if he had to grab a piece of binder's twine or a, a, a cedar shake or shingle and splice it, that's what that's what he'd do. So you can see this is just a sapling that was whittled whittled down to replace a, a staff that must have either been blown apart or lost. And then some of the earlier ones, there's even more about it. You can see I can show you bullet holes and bullet hole over. There's a bullet hole. Just took a chunk out of the flag. The 97th were they're all from Chester County. This is their second issue state flag. So their first one was in bad shape. They request, requested this. Uh, and this one I pull fairly frequently, um, not only for reenactors, but also for people that want to want to see one that has documented bullet holes in it. So we know that the their bearer's name was um, Color Sergeant James McCarty. Um, he was carrying this at the Battle of um, Fort Fisher, which was Wilmington, North Carolina. So this was in, I believe, what, February of 1865. Let me double check my date. Yeah, February 22nd, 1865. Um, so he was, he was actually wounded in the knee. He couldn't go on. So he relinquished the flag to their uh, colonel at the time, whose name was Galusha Pennypacker. He's related to Governor Samuel Pennypacker distantly, I think a cousin of some type. Uh, Pennypacker was wounded two or three times. The fourth time, he had the flag planted on the ramparts of Fort Fisher. And from what I understand, Fort Fisher was just kind of a sandbox of piled sand. So shooting cannonballs into a sandbox didn't really do anything. You had to mass the men and go take the fort. And it was the last, that was the last Confederate port that was open. So in February of 65, the Confederate start kind of running on empty. If they can close that port, nothing's coming in or out. Penny Packer was wounded a fourth time. He was hit and nicked a couple times, but the last one hit him in the, in the abdomen. He was, a, he was wounded in the gut. And we're fairly sure, 95% sure, that that's blood spatter from Galusha Pennypacker that spattered onto the, the flag because of where it was planted, where it would have been on his body. Um, McCarty survived, so did Pennypacker. Uh, Pennypacker was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor for not, he didn't want to be evacuated until the battle was finished, till the fort was taken. Um, that was the time that they actually did take the fort. But after McCarty survived. I guess he counted up the number of bullet holes and there were 107 in the flag from Fort Fisher that hadn't been there before the battle. So that's a fair, <laughs> fairly re remarkable number that it took 107 hits at that 